Howdy, Beefalo Bart here, and welcome. Get started off with, I've got a nice clean blank project. Yes, I could have created it with third person, but whatever. Personal habits. We're going to add in third person. And for a little bit of flavor, let's add in some Cinti Studios Western Pack. Add to project, and we've called this one pickups. All right, so see the little thing sliding across right there, the green highlighting. So let me know that it's still loading in. So we'll let it finish doing its thing, and then we'll go ahead and retarget a character. All right, should be done. So while we're doing that. First thing we're going to do is go ahead and retarget our character. And it's a common thing. Mesh and open up our skeletal mesh for our default UE4 mannequin. And we know that he's in the A pose. Since we, you know, are calling it the wrong thing, calling it a Y pose, but uh, whatever. Um, what I usually do is up 50 on the upper arms. And I usually do town 10 and back 30 because you notice the arms aren't exactly at the elbow. They're not exactly a full T pose. So if you look at it from the front, see it's elevated a little bit, but let's go ahead and I never show it from different angles. Let's go ahead and rotate it back by 30 degrees on both lower arms. And that's actually pretty good. And let's go ahead and raise the hand up by 10. May or may not be necessary, but whatever. Now, I did not rotate it down by 10 this time. Um, because that's what I usually do. Try changing it up a little bit here and there, but We'll stick to the, the usual, the way that I, I normally retarget. And then we're going to modify a pose, use current pose, and save. And make sure that edit, editor preferences, before I get upset about it. Main window, and loading and saving, disable auto save. All right, we'll go ahead and save all. Save selected, and since I'm not using my usual uh, 420, I'm using 422.2, the latest version. So, new folder, character, inside there, we need a mesh folder, and we are going to need another new folder for blueprints, another new folder for animations and inside the animations we're going to go ahead and add in a new folder called unarmed not necessary but I do it anyway next thing we want to do is go into our polygon western mesh folder characters and again not necessary if you're only going to do one asset pack but I plan on adding in the um, the frontier pack as well so we're going to copy this over to our new mesh folder, and we're going to rename that to sk underscore polygon. Then we're going to open that skeleton, and make sure it's set to humanoid. But what we're going to have to do now is go back to our character folder and select all of our skeletal meshes. Right-click, and go to skeleton, assign skeleton, and we're going to click on the SK Polygon. And set to keep selecting it and selecting Accept for each of the skeletal meshes. And we are just about done. Only a handful of characters in this one, so that's cool. And then we'll do Save All, Save Selected. Now we'll go back to our new mesh, go into it, and we want to hit Apply to Asset. That's going to lock a character into it, and then hit save. 
Now we can go to our animation folder and with a single click, hit F2, that was the left click, Control C, and then click off of it, then right click on it, and select to retarget, select that, our polygon, replace, Control V, that pastes in the third person anim BP, and I'm going to change it to unarmed ABP. So we have an unarmed animation blueprint. We're going to hit change, go to character, animations, unarmed, OK, and retarget. And we are now retargeted. We can go into our blueprints folder, and now we need our player character. So what I'm going to do is go to third person BP, blueprints, and then I'm going to drag that over to the blueprints folder, copy here, and I'm going to rename that to player underscore base. That's just what I call my characters. So now when we go into it, I'm personally not going to use a touch input, so I can delete that. I am not using a gamepad, so I'm going to delete that. And I'm not doing VR, so I'm going to get rid of that. So we got basics there. Go to our viewport, go to our mesh, select a new mesh. Let's be the sheriff. Go to animation class, unarmed ABP, compost, and save. And now we have the ability to go to our game mode override, third person game mode, and change our default pawn to player underscore base. So now if we hit play, we have a mouse cursor, but we have a character that can walk around and run around and do awesome things. Yay, and there was much rejoicing. So, I want to go back into my player. Because I hate having that mouse cursor. And we're going to do event begin play. First thing we're going to do from that is set input to game only. And neaten it up. We want to get player controller, and then from here, set show mouse cursor, leave it unchecked, just connect it in here, and now we're going to get rid of that mouse cursor. So now if we hit play, bang, no mouse cursor, we can just jump right in and start testing things. We don't have to click on the screen anywhere. So now what we want to do is go to our maps. I'm going to go to the demonstration map for this asset pack because it's awesome. Um, while we're loading that in, tonight's drink of choice, Gatorade Fruit Punch and Seagram's Ginger Ale. Mm, not adding anything to the ginger ale, it's just straight up cold ginger ale. Although a little bit of orange is good with ginger ale. We're going to uncheck that because we're not saving that map. And then save selected. Why? I don't know, but okay, whatever. All right, compiling shaders. That won't take long. So we actually will have a map in here to run around and play on. I will, while it's doing that, go to content. And I'm going to create another new folder called Maps. And we will create a test map. Instead of trying to, to run around on this one and do everything on this map, just want to showcase it. There's one thing they did not put in this map. And it is cool that it is um, um, a circle track right here. But there's no train at the station. And if you want them to, you can go into the vehicles rigged, and you have the train engine, the coal tender, um, passenger car, freight car. Um, you've got a, a separate smokestack you can add on. So if you want it on the train, you can put it on there. Um, I would honestly build the engine into a blueprint. Um, that way you can add things like smoke to it that will be attached to uh, a socket you can put onto it. So you can put smokestack on there and attach it to the socket and 
or attach a socket to it and then spawn an emitter on or attach an emitter to the socket and you can actually have smoke coming from the stack so if we do this we go to game mode override third person game mode and hit play there's no player start so it's just wherever you are when you press start it'll load up so awesome there's no sound but yeah one thing I will look into later on is instead of having these to where you have to manually have them open or closed or hit a button to open and close it would be nice to have some form of, of spring based gravity on them where you can just walk through and they spring back that would be something that would be awesome to have no idea how to do it but I'm sure there's a way um, there's, there were some little bugs here and there on this, this map like this there's an issue trying to go up the stairs um, a collision issue these stairs are a little bit on the low side because of the terrain um, no big deal um, all the doors are closed like always on the Cindy projects not all of them but most of them a jail cell so otherwise a really cool map so let's go ahead and save all save selected and let's go ahead and create a new test map new level VR basic I like using the VR basic because it's a, a captive map um, let's go from the ball to the bottom cube with a shift click and then a control click on the pyramid delete and like I usually do grab him slide him there slide him there game mode override third person and player base and we now have a map to test things on so let's go ahead and save all save selected go to our maps folder and we'll call this our test map now we're good to go so we need some items to pick up and we should have a pretty fair number of things we can do um, we've got attachments holster bandana bottles some bones there um, let's see what else can we use the typical would be for picking up a weapon you know that's a common issue well I gotta pick up a gun I gotta have a gun I gotta have a gun I gotta have a gun you don't, you don't gotta have a gun it's just really awesome to have guns I love guns they're awesome uh, let's see what else can we do yeah, the whiskey bottles would be good environment probably not gonna be anything for pickups in here um, weapons we got knife rifle shotgun sawed off shotgun and two pistols black powder and Colt style well both Colt styles but whatever our first pickup we're just going to use this pouch attachment pouch is zero two we're just gonna pick it up and make it go away so what we need to do is create and we're done with our character folder for the moment done with the mannequin folder for the moment Let's go to content new folder gadgets and then I'm gonna make another new folder called pickups and we're going to create a blueprint actor loot underscore bag underscore BP so this is our our loot bag we're going to pick up go ahead and open that go back in here go back to the prop that we want select it go back here add a component now when we select our static mesh it's already there so bang we got it now one thing I do want to say about this is it is below ground what's happening so if I take this and I just throw it into the map if we look at it it's actually below the ground we don't want it below the ground so let's go ahead and raise it up raise it up by 10 that's good but we want more now that's gonna be above ground 
so let's change our snapping here. Holy shit. I'm um, sorry. <clears throat> yeah. You haven't missed much, I promise. Um, yeah, all I did was when I created it, whenever I added the uh, static mesh, I just made sure that I selected the static mesh in here. And then whenever I went to add a component, it's already selected right there. So it automatically adds in our, our pouch. So let's actually rename that. Let's call it pouch. Change this to five on snapping. And that should have it on ground level. There we go. Oh, sorry about that. Um, yeah, I, I had it set on the wrong tab there for, uh, it was still set for a different scene. So we need another component and we have box collision, capsule collision, and spherical collision. Could probably get away with a sphere. Um, uh, or a capsule, either one. We're going to try that. That should be good enough. So, we just wanted big enough to, to be there. It can be a little bit larger. That's fine. We can see right there the um, the orange lines. Let's us know where it is. I don't know if you guys can see the orange line on, on the screen there. but um, Go to our event graph. And let's dump off everything right there. Right click on our capsule. Add event. On component. Begin overlap. We know that our player is called player base. So I'm going to drag from other actor and cast to player underscore base. Now the first part of the video was just retargeting to get our character there. I've shown that in pretty much every video with Cindy Studios assets. So if you don't know how to retarget your characters to um, to the regular unarmed animation blueprint, then you can go back and watch pretty much any video that I <laughs> that I've done with that. So, what we've done here is we're, we're casting to our player. And now we want to do something as our player. We want to be able to pick the item up um, short term so that we can see that we are doing this. As soon as our player goes over, we can do this a couple different ways, like uh, print text, and it'll just say hello. So, we go in here with our character, we walk over, hey look, there's a loop bag. And it says hello on the upper left every time we walk by it. So, I'm not going to leave that in there. Um, this is actually my first time using 422.2. I don't know what's different between it, but whatever. Um, what we want to do, though, is we want to set this to where... What do we want our loot bag to do? We want it to give us some credits. Maybe some gold. So, let's go to our character folder and blueprint player base and let's add in a new variable called gold we're actually going to make this a float let's make it an integer because it's a solid number you know it's, we can't have a half a gold so we now have that. We have no gold there. And we want to be able to see our gold. So we need... Um, let's go to our gadgets. And let's do another new folder called UI for user interface. And... Get a widget blueprint. And we'll call our player underscore HUD. And for right now, we have no stats on our HUD. We have nothing. So what I want to do is I want to put our gold in just as a number right here in the bottom right-hand corner. So I'm going to grab an image, anchor it to the bottom right-hand corner, and just for shits and grins, we're going to do this. Just make that there. We're going to go to our color and opacity. We're going to change this to... Go black and point 
five on our alpha. And that's just going to give us a little darkened area of the screen so we can actually see what we're doing. We'll compost and save. We'll grab text. And right now this is going to be good enough. It doesn't matter what we have written in here, but I'm going to go ahead and put in three digits. Let's go ahead and center that up so it fills this a little bit nicer. Uh, color is fine. I'm not worried about how pretty this looks right now. We just want it functional. So we go right here to bind, create binding, and we'll just drag this out so we have a little bit of room. I'm going to change this to get uh, caps lock, get gold amount, and we're going to cast to our player underscore base. Get player character. And we are going to get gold. And then we're going to drag this one to this one. And it'll automatically give me a two text to convert the integer to a text value. So compile and save. And we need to ensure that we go back to our designer and make sure we anchor that to the bottom right. Compost, save. That's good enough for now. And on begin play. This is awesome. But let's go ahead and collapse this to function. And we're going to call this instead of new function. Call this our um, input setup. So now, that just needs that up just a little bit. And now, let's go ahead and build in our next part, which is create widget. And owning a player, get player controller. And I'm just gonna throw that there. Player HUD. Add to viewport. And again, we can right click and collapse to function. And this is um, setup player HUD. It just cleans things up a little bit. So we hit compile and save. Go in here now. You can see in the bottom right hand corner. We have a zero. We have no gold. We haven't picked up anything. So now what we're going to want to do is we want to pick up this little gold pouch. And when we do, we want it to give us 10 gold. And then we want it to vanish. So good on that. And go to our event graph. So go to sneeze. <laughs> ah, the joys of live streaming. As player base, we want to get gold and here's what we want to do here is we add a variable and gold amount create that and we're going to make this an integer and we are going to click right here so we can adjust this so compost save and drag this in here and get gold amount and we're going to set this to 10 as a default value. We'll do gold plus, so integer plus integer. We're going to do, we're going to increase our gold by the amount of gold in the bag. And we are going to set gold by this value. So now we're picking up the gold, and let's test that out, even though I know it's going to work. Walk over here, and bang, 
we just got 10 gold. Walk over it again, because it doesn't go anywhere. Get 10 gold. You notice we're stepping on it when we go by? So we don't really want to step on it. So let's go to our pouch. Go over here. Collision presets. No collision. Compile and save. Now, our pouch. We click on it here, and we'll go to our details panel. We can see gold amount. I want to change it to 25. So that bag is going to give me 25. You see, 25 each time, and we have no collision. We're not stepping on top of it. So if I actually go in here and Control C, Control V, so I have a second one in here, and I have this one selected. This one's only going to give me 10 gold. So if I walk over this one, it's 25. Walk over this one, it's 10. So now, alternatively, you could do if you want to set up your gold amount to be random you can actually instead of doing it this way you can uh, set a random or get random like random integer in range and put in okay I want a minimum of one gold a maximum of 50 gold and then you plug this return value into here instead and you will get a random amount of gold each time between 1 and 50 gold so you can just forget about that one and unplug it plug this in here and now we have a random amount of gold each time doesn't matter what you queue these in as even though it says 25 if I walk over this one, it's going to give me 22. Walk over this one, a, it's a random each time. So that's just two ways of setting up how much gold you get each time if you're wanting to do this as a gold pickup. So the next thing I want to do is I want to make sure... Actually, I'm going to lower that down to 25 as my max. I then want to... Destroy Hector. So, once I walk over it, hey, look, a bag of gold. Boom. I got 13 gold from it. It's gone. I, I can't step on it anymore. It is no longer in the map. So, that's your basic pickup system. So, now, again, I grab here, Control-C, Control-V, put another one here, Control-V, put one right here. So, as we walk over and pick them up, deletes itself and it's gone and each time we step over one it's going to give us a random value and it keeps updating our gold in our bottom right hand corner of the screen so now we have proof that we've gained gold we've picked up that resource so now if you walk over to a vendor and say hey I'd like to buy this and you build your vendor system well, it's something for a different day but with that we've got a good clean basic pickup system uh, that once we pick up the item, it disappears, and there you go. Any questions on on that and having a good, clean, simple system? Now that I can, you know, have video to, to show what I'm doing. So now, let's go ahead and save all. Save selected. Let's go to our polygon demonstration map for this. And let's see the sheriff's office. Since I am the sheriff, open the door. And we want to walk into the saloon. Open up the doors. Again, that's something I'd like to look into at some point of actually making those doors functional. So if you wanted to, you could actually come over here and start putting in our pick up of our loot bag and throw one in there you can throw them all over the map put them wherever you want draw you're making your game you could do whatever you like open up that and what was our problem here I don't remember 
Um, I think it was something to do with this right here. This piece had a collision issue, if I'm not mistaken. I will have to look into that again and submit another trouble report. I'll let the guys at Cinti know that that's still a problem. This is, as far as I know, is the latest version of this asset pack. Um, they've updated it a couple times. The good thing about them, they get something out, and then thankfully now that there's a Discord channel, um, I know because I helped them set it up, um, the Discord channel is a good place for submitting trouble reports. Um, I set up a channel in there for them to have bug reports. So you can go in there and say, hey, I found a bug in so-and-so, or on this map, or on this this item or what have you. You can go in there on their Discord channel and let them know that you found a, a bug somewhere. I'm just going to open up a few of these buildings. Like the supply. Let's open it to the inside. If we want, we can go in here. We'll throw another loot bag in there. So this works with whatever you want. This basic system here for a pickup uh, is great for all manner of stuff but you've also created an actor and at that point you can actually use this as a um, a spawnable item you kill a bad guy they fall over dead and um, which we'll cover more on loot drops in another video but you could do loot drops you kill a bad guy it, they drop a bag of gold maybe a pistol or or something of that nature go to the undertaker Let's drop bag gold in here. Oop. Let's open up the door. So, it's a good prime example of what you can do to get started with. Um, really quickly, I'm going to go ahead and go to um, Gadgets, New Folder, Vehicles, and New Blueprint. Actor train underscore engine underscore VP, even though we know it's a blueprint. And I'm going to go to the actual vehicles rigged, select the steam engine, go back in here, and I'm going to add a component, skeletal mesh, and it's there. Now, this one does come with and without. You can add in the um, the smokestack if you want. Um, I'm not gonna. Oh man. Um, particle effects. Smoke white, smoke black. Let's start off with smoke black. And I'm gonna add in a. Let's check and see if there is a inner skeleton for our train skeleton tree bell wheels or sticks no nope. so I'm going to select right here and I am going to right click and I'm going to add a socket and then I'm going to Reselect it, hit F2, smoke stack. And with that smoke stack, what I want to do now is just position it. Where the smoke would come out from the smoke stack. Looks good. Looks good. So let's go ahead and hit save on that, close that, select the train, add a component, but first off we want to go back to our particle effects, select our smoke black, and then with our train selected, let's add a component of particle system, and it's already there, smoke stack, um, smoke black, you can see it's down here. Parent socket, let's go ahead and hit this, and select smoke stack, and there you go. If you want, you can lower it down just a little bit so it looks like it's actually starting inside the stack and going in. 
So compile and save. So now if you add motion to this later, that smoke's going to be there and the smoke will automatically trail. So now if we go in here, go back to our vehicles and let's put our train on the tracks. So you can see it's not lined up perfect. So let's go ahead and try to line it up a little bit better. Close enough for government work. So now with our train engine blueprint here, put it in here and hit play. Of course, you know, I don't have a player to start, but we have smoke coming off. Hey, get out of there. Cool. Nice and easy, right? And it's a great way to do things like for um, particle effects around your map. If you want to add in like um, smoke coming out of a blacksmith shop, out of a furnace, or something of that nature, um, jump right in and do it. You can see we've got our gold pickups laid around. I uh, placed one in the sheriff's office, you know, in the funeral parlor. So we can run around. I got a, a gold out of that, you sack of shit. Um, another thing I like to do is also um, the one of my favorite asset packs from the marketplace is the pedestrians asset pack. Um, I'll take and actually move the um, bar stool out, and I've got an, one of the animations that's in there. It looks like someone's actually playing the piano a little bit, and what I'll actually do is um, I have no idea where it is, but let me look really quickly. Audio. Now, I think I've already got this one converted over to a WAV file, which is one way of doing it. But if you want smaller sizes, then um, you can leave them as MP3s and do it that way. I've got other videos on setting up music and audio. Let's. Make sure that we go into our gadgets folder, new folder, audio, and we'll need FX, and we will need music, spelled absolutely wrong, M U S I C. Then I'm going to drag this in here. I think this is the right one. Take a second for it to actually kick in. So we got an old timey piano. Let's go ahead and hit save all. Save selected. We need two things here. We need to right click and create a cue. And that's fine. And we need a sound attenuation piano underscore ATT. So I know that's an attenuation. I want to change this down to about 800. It'll probably change about a half dozen times. Sound attenuation is the sound radius of where we want it to play. So now in our output, we want to select looping so it, it's continuous and attenuation settings we want our piano now all we have to do is either of two things I can select the piano create a blueprint for it attach the uh, thing in there or I can just grab the piano cue and just drop it right there so now we can have a dude sitting here playing the piano and that's awesome, but if we don't want it to be in the thing, as soon as we walk out, we can't hear it anymore. But as soon as we start getting ready to walk into it, we can start start hearing it. However, doing it this way, um, it, it, every time you get in range, it'll start the song fresh. So. As long as we can hear it and we're within the attenuation range, it's fine. But as soon as we walk away from it, 
out of the attenuation range completely, walk back in, it starts all over again from the very beginning. Not a great big issue, but if you want it to be playing continuous and not be interrupted, then is where you would attach it to the blueprint, and then on event begin play, in the blueprint for the piano, that's when you say, okay, you know, do your thing, start playing. Now, now, no matter when you walk in, you might come in halfway through the song, or whatever. Okay, that's a little bit more than what I want to cover in this video, but I just want to cover a basic pickup system. We can start looking at more advanced pickups later, but that'll get us started. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I uh, went a little bit longer than normal because I screwed up the first part of it and couldn't see anything. But I want to thank everybody for watching, and we will see you soon.